I've been in New York and New Delhi. I've been in Bangkok and Paris and Rome. Wherever I've traveled, I've seen that calmness and peace of mind are a human phenomenon. They are not cultural. There are people who are calm in all parts of the world, and there are people who are restless, and it's not a matter of how they were brought up so much as who they are and how they live. But one thing I've noticed also is that people who are restless, who don't have inner peace, don't have happiness, don't have their lives together. They sort of spin off in all sorts of directions and nothing seems to go right for them. Now, I think the most important thing that is missing in our culture today is this sort of gathering of our concentration and our forces within ourselves to remember who we are and what we are to learn how to meditate. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about meditation. What is meditation? Why meditate? You know, I've been meditating now for nearly 50 years, every day. And quite frankly, I don't know how anybody lives without meditating. And to be even franker, I don't think they do live. I think that they live in a sort of a no-man's land because they don't have real joy. Without peace of mind, there is no possibility of happiness or joy. With restlessness, there is only disturbance of the heart and of the mind. And so meditation is a practice which can help everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. I often think that uh, in our day and age, people take the time, many of them, to go out and jog, exercise their bodies. They take the time to brush their teeth and do other minimal hygienic activities that will keep them uh, more or less clean inside and fit. It's just beginning to become known and understood that we also have to keep our minds calm. We have to learn how to control our minds. It's almost like when somebody goes into a factory to uh, help them to know how to cut corners in their work so they can work more efficiently. Our mind is a kind of factory. It's a factory of ideas. It's a factory of uh, energies. And if we don't know how to direct these energies and these ideas with focus, with concentration, then we tend to just sort of jump around or to go in circles. I have seen something else, because not only have I meditated for 50 years, but I've come in contact with thousands of people who meditate also. And I've seen that uh, the people who uh, take the time to meditate, all of them find that they can solve their problems much more quickly, much more easily. In other words, somebody who says, oh, well, I don't have the time to meditate. I've got all these duties to fulfill. I've got all these jobs to do, all these responsibilities. And the truth is that if they could get their minds calm, concentrated, which is what they do with meditation, then they find that in a few moments, they can solve problems that otherwise they might fret over for hours, days, even weeks. It's a very important aspect of your life to be able to use your mind and your energies effectively. And that's what meditation does. Meditation is a way primarily of getting you back to your own center. And I've often thought about skiing and the example of a skier who's rushing down the slope and he suddenly finds himself faced with a mogul. Now, if you don't ski, perhaps you don't know what a mogul is, but it's a little bump in the slope. And uh, as you come to that bump, you have to be able to know quickly whether to turn left or right. And perhaps you've already made up your mind that you've got to turn right, when suddenly you see that there's a good reason for turning left. If you are not committed to a turn, or if you're committed to turning in the wrong way, and then need to change direction, then you find that you fall down. 
And so if we have balance, if we're centered in our spines, you might say, then we can quickly adjust to whatever circumstances life throws at us. And instead of shouting and getting angry and upset, you find that you can adjust to reality. In a book of mine called Education for Life, I give a good definition of maturity, which is the ability to relate to other realities than one's own. That means, of course, it includes the idea of being able to adjust quickly to new directions, new uh, ways of looking at things, other people's uh, thoughts, and to see how those might be included in your own. To be uh, in yourself is to be mature. To meditate is to achieve that maturity. So we're going to be talking this hour about meditation, what it is, how to do it. What is meditation? Many people use the word meditation to uh, think about problems, for example. I'll meditate on that, and they, they uh, let their mind sort of go in circles about uh, how to solve a problem, or perhaps even more than that, or worse than that, thinking about the problem without even thinking about how to solve it. Well, meditation isn't that. That is actually a part of the way the conscious mind works, and we're talking about another level of consciousness. You see, there is the conscious mind, which is basically problem-oriented. It analyzes, it dissects, it, it uh, sees how this thing is different from that. And there's another aspect of the mind that many people know all about, or at least something about the subconscious, from which our impulses, our desires, our... our uh, uh, tendencies that we don't uh, really even know about on a conscious level, and yet they, to a large extent, affect the way we behave, the way we uh, react to things, how we like things or dislike things. The subconscious is the realm of dreams. But there's another aspect of the mind, and people are only now beginning to talk about it seriously, and that is the superconscious. There is a higher aspect to your mind. It's that aspect. It doesn't come from the subconscious. The subconscious is not wise. But there is an aspect of your own consciousness that is wise, that knows what uh, to do in any circumstance. And you've certainly had times in your life when suddenly you knew. Maybe you received an inspiration. Maybe you knew this is what is right. Maybe you, you felt that that's what's going to happen, and there was no sensory reason to tell you that's why it should happen or that it must happen. Nonetheless, you know. This is a little glimpse, a sort of a whisper from the subconscious, this, I mean the superconscious, and you can reach up into that superconscious through meditation. When you meditate, then suddenly you open your mind, if you meditate rightly, you open your mind to that higher aspect of your own being. And so meditation is different from concentration, and meditation is also different from prayer. Prayer, you might say, is, is asking God to come to you, asking God to help you, asking God to guide you, whatever it might be. But most people in prayer do all the talking. What we have to do is listen for God's answer. Now, I know some people don't like the word God, but you know, God is in you, and he's your own higher self. In fact, you can think of him as the highest potential you can imagine for yourself. And the reason it's good to think of God is because otherwise you tend to think I, I, and limit it to the ego. And uh, that's what prayer is basically all about. What you need to do and you don't need to listen to a voice booming at you from the clouds. You don't need to listen to some cosmic policeman directing you to go left or right. What you need to do is listen to your own higher conscience. We need to listen. And this attitude of listening is often a matter not of what you listen to, but the attitude of mind, how you listen. And so one thing that will help you is to Learn how to release the restless thoughts. 
And meditation, finally, is listening to the silence underneath all the thoughts of your being, underneath your, your personality, and to listen to that deeper side of your nature which sings to you from your own superconscious. Finally, meditation means to focus your attention on those higher realities that are really you. And what are those realities? Well, I started with one of them, silence. But out of silence comes peace. And out of peace comes calmness. Peace, you see, is a negative thing in a way. Calmness is very strong and vibrant. And then behind that calmness, there is wisdom, there is joy, there is love. And there is also light. And underneath the silence, a deep sound, the music of the spheres that the Indian scriptures speak of as Om, and that the Christian Bible speaks of the Amen. But all mystics in all religions have communed with that sound. And it has lifted them out of the ego and out of the thought of self and personality into a recognition that they are a part of everything that is. Now meditation is focusing on that and gradually learning to lose your uh, smallness, to expand it into that greater reality. Now, there are ways that we can do this, and this is where we have to teach you techniques of meditation. But I'd like to emphasize before I do that, that meditation is also something that you can do all the time. Yes, the stillness of meditation comes with sitting absolutely still physically, but also as you walk, as you, as you go about your affairs, be always recollected in yourself. Be always sort of uh, mindful. Uh, you could even put it this way, be other-minded, so that behind the flowers, behind the wind, behind the clouds scudding in the skies, behind that there is some deeper awareness that brought you and all these things into existence. And meditation is something that you can do wherever you are in this sense. Just learn not to talk so much. We do much too much talking. Learn to be a little quiet. And in fact, even when you have to talk with people, don't just listen to their words and don't just blurt in and say, oh, I've got an idea. But listen to what they're intention is behind their words, because very often people don't, um, they don't say what they really mean. They often want to, but don't know how. But uh, sometimes they don't want to, because their feelings are too deep to be expressed. And so we don't really communicate with people until we learn how to commune with people. And to commune with them means to go deeper than their personalities and to perceive that deep inner self that is struggling for outreach, struggling for communication, yes, but struggling to touch life even as you are. Each one of us is like an island on the ocean, united, apparently separate, but united underneath because we are all projections of the same Mother Earth. So meditation, again, is listening. And before we get into the practice of uh, meditating in a formal way, I'd like to begin, because I don't want to tie you down to rigid practices that you might find strange. I'd like to begin with where you are in your life, with who you are, and suggest to you ways of transforming that uh, familiarity into something that is much a much deeper kind of familiarity. Not just the familiarity that you look at yourself, you see in your mirror every morning when you comb your hair. Not just that person whom you know to have likes and dislikes and habits, but listen to who you really are. Listen to your deeper ideals. Listen. Listen to the world. Be more aware of what is going on 
around you. Meditation is really, it begins with that pause, the pause between two thoughts, the pause between two emotions, the pause between two events, the ups and the downs of life. And I'd like to begin now to teach you a little bit about the uh, actual technique of meditation. It's time we got to work. What you need to do if you want to really enter that pause is learn to keep your body completely still and then try to make your mind still also. Now there are certain things that can help you in this. One thing of course is deep breathing because when your body needs to be oxygenated, when it's full of carbon dioxide, you have been getting enough fresh air, then the mind becomes dull. Meditation is not going to sleep. Meditation is not dullness. It's not apathy. It's a moment when your mind is very fresh, very clear, very concentrated. And so the first thing you need to do is breathe a little bit. Now I'd suggest that you begin by breathing, inhaling, slowly, hold the breath slowly, exhale slowly. And in this particular exercise, we won't hold the breath out, but we'll inhale, counting to 12 mentally, hold 12 mentally, exhale, counting 12 mentally, like this. Hold. Exhale. And with that rhythm, do that two or three times. Now, because time is somewhat short, we won't go through that exercise completely. I have a lot I'd like to tell you. So let's, let's now, let's assume you've done that three times, okay? Inhale, counting 12, holding, counting 12, exhale, counting 12. Now, inhale and tense the whole body. You see, you need to relax the body too. And there are many parts of the body that will be tense even without your being aware of it. You need to inhale and equalize that flow of tension all over the body. Then, once your body is tense, then when you throw the breath out, you'll be able to relax the whole body simultaneously. So let's then begin. Um, inhale like that, tense the whole body and exhale and relax. And when you tense, vibrate the whole body with tension. So once again, exhale and throw the breath out and relax. Now keep the breath out. It would help you at this point to close your eyes, but don't do it yet because I want you to watch me. There is a point that you need to concentrate on, and that is right here at the point between the eyebrows. You know, it's interesting. People are wiser than they realize. Many spiritual teachings we all understand without knowing that they're spiritual teachings. One of them is that this is the seat of concentration in the body, and you know when you concentrate deeply, you tend to knit your eyebrows, don't you? It's because you automatically send your mind to this whenever you concentrate. Now, what's that mean? You think here. This is the seat of concentration. Now, what you want to do in your meditation is focus your gaze and your attention at the point between the eyebrows. This is the seat also of higher consciousness. It's the seat of superconsciousness. And the more you can bring your mind in a focus to that point, the more you will find your consciousness becoming uplifted. I had a, an experience many years ago. I suddenly found myself in a mood, and I tried to reason my way out of this mood, and I just couldn't get out of it. And I didn't like the mood, and so I decided, well, instead of sort of thinking my way into a deeper and deeper mood, I'm going to have to try something else. So I sat down and I focused my mind with all my willpower at that point between the eyebrows. You know that in a few seconds my mood had changed. This is the seat of higher consciousness. When you can bring your mind there, you can get rid of diseases as well as moods. You can get rid of the darkness in your body and in your mind. You can find that everything will go better for you if you can focus your attention there. Just try it. Now, I spoke of focusing your gaze at that point. I didn't mean like that. I didn't mean 
cross, crossing your eyes so much as you could put it this way, that if you held your thumb out at arm's length, the focus that you'd have there would be just a slight. The main thing is that your attention be here. Now, after you've done the inhalation and exhalation, inhaling, tensing the body, throwing the breath out and relaxing, then focus your attention here and try mentally, this, at this point you can close your eyes and try to feel space in your body and feel as if all that space were being focused at this point. Now, if you have any sensation, like somebody perhaps is uh, uh, walking outside, maybe you hear a car horn or a train going by or whatever it might be, imagine that that sensation is originating here, not in your ears, not in your body. Try to get everything centered here at the point between the eyebrows. And the more you do that, the more your feelings also, whenever you have any kind of feeling, offer it up. You don't want to do it with force. You have to relax there because meditation, and in fact the way the whole superconscious works, is not by forcing anything. You relax into superconsciousness just the way you relax into sleep, except that in sleep you relax into a lower consciousness. In this, if you can just catch that little dividing line between the conscious and the subconscious, that's where the superconscious lies. Even at night when you go to sleep, try for a few moments before you surrender to sleep to catch that little dividing line and you'll suddenly find in that, in that relaxation you may enter into at least a kind of semi-superconscious state. So when you concentrate at the point between the eyebrows, your first rule in meditation is to relax. Relax into awareness, don't relax into sleep. Relax your body by thinking space in your body. And you may think of space all around your body and feel that you are releasing into that space every last vestige of tension uh, and mental preoccupation. And then relax more and more upward. Meditate with a feeling of pleasure, not with a feeling of duty and hardship and uh, stern willpower, but just feel that you enjoy your reality, the deeper reality of your own being. Be like the sea. Be like a wave on the sea that merges back into the great ocean and becomes the ocean. The deeper your calmness, the more you will expand. But as the waves rise onto the beach and sink back with a hiss into the ocean again, so now be conscious of your breath. Feel that your breath is like the waves. And watch the breath. Don't control it, but just watch it impersonally and allow it to come in and out. And in fact, in the ancient teachings of yoga, which has, is really the science of meditation, they say that there is a mantra that will help you to calm your mind and it will resonate with the breath. So when the breath comes in and you're just watching it without control, as it comes in, mentally say, Hong, H-O-N-G. And as the breath goes out, mentally say, saw. S-A-U. Now the meaning of this in Sanskrit basically is I am He. I am that ocean. I am that vast expanded peace and love and joy. But you don't have to think so much of the meaning because the words themselves will soothe you into that expanded state. So sit as long as you like and just watch the breath and feel that you are going more and more into the stillness of your own ocean depths, that you are one with the ocean. You are a part of it. Let the breath flow like the waves until finally there's no breath anymore and there is only your own vastness. That is meditation. <laughs>